Hello and welcome to Precepts with Bob Yandian. We are continuing our study of healing this week. Many people take issue with whether God gives healing to us today. If you have ever questioned this aspect of God's grace, stay with us for this new series by Bob Yandian called Healing is Our Right. Now, with today's lesson, here's Bob Yandian. Turn with me to Luke chapter 4 this evening. We're going back to the verse that we went to on Sunday morning, and we're going to take a look and we're going to go from that one and talk about what Jesus did when he came into the synagogue on that day in his own hometown of Nazareth and uh, how that he stood up on that day and read from this particular passage of scripture in Isaiah chapter 61. But look with me beginning in verse 16. Luke chapter 4 and verse 16 it says he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and as his custom was he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. Underline those three words the Sabbath day. That's the key. He went on the Sabbath day and he's going to talk about the Sabbath of Sabbaths. And that is, again, the uh, time when he talks about here that I've come to preach the acceptable year of the Lord, the year of Jubilee. Jubilee was the Sabbath of Sabbaths. He comes on the Sabbath day to preach about healing and the power of the Lord and the Spirit of the Lord upon him. And this is what we talked about Sunday. And he says in that verse also, he stood up for to read, there was delivered to him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, Isaiah 61, verses 1 and 2. And again, he only went halfway through verse 2. The second half of verse 2 is yet to be fulfilled. The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, preach deliverance to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. So Jesus, on this day of rest, came and preached divine healing. Now, if Jesus preached divine healing on the Sabbath day and you weren't supposed to work on the Sabbath day, then you might as well write this down. Healing for God is not work. Okay? Otherwise, he would have announced it on that day. He would have said, let's announce this tomorrow, you know. Let's announce it on Sunday or Monday or Tuesday or Thursday. Let's announce it on another day. But he announced it on that day and said, this day, on the Sabbath day, is this fulfilled in your ears? And I love what Jesus was doing. He was setting a precedent from the very first day he entered into his hometown to talk about healing. I think Jesus delighted in healing on the Sabbath day. Not only so people could get healed, I think he liked to rub it in the face of religion. Because in his day, religion didn't like healing on the Sabbath day. And this was one of the major contentions they had with Jesus himself. And again, Jesus delighted in healing on the Sabbath day. Let's take a look at some other verses of Scripture. <coughs> look with me at Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13. This is one of just many stories that Jesus delighted in healing on the Sabbath day. Luke chapter 13. I don't honestly think he really did this, but I like to think that you know, if it was Friday, he would say, wait one more day. I just want to make the religious leaders upset. I'll heal you tomorrow. <laughs> so, and that way you can stand up and say, this day is this fulfilled in your ears. Luke chapter 13, look with me at verse 10. It says, and he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the what? Sabbath. It says, and behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years, and she was bowed together and could in no way lift herself up. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said to her, Woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said to the people, now the reason why he's so upset, because he's seeing that healing is work, and you're not supposed to work on the Sabbath day. He said to the people, there are six days in which a man ought to work, so in them come and be healed, but not on the Sabbath day. I throw a question out to you. Were those guys able to heal on Monday? They're complaining that you ought to come on the other six days and get healed, but they never could heal anybody. They're complaining Jesus healed on the Sabbath day and telling everybody it's the wrong day. But on the right days, they can't do anything. I love that. He says, and not on the Sabbath day, it says in verse 15, the Lord then answered them and said, you hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass or his donkey from the stall 
and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound indeed, these 18 years be loosed from her, from her bondage, or this bondage, on the Sabbath day? And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed or embarrassed, and all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things which were done by him. You know, again, the Pharisees couldn't heal on any day. And yet they complained about Jesus and said he's healing on the wrong day. And they said that there are six days in which you can work, but one day you can't work. What they were doing was equating divine healing with work. Folks, the reason why I say it wasn't work is because the work was done. Healing is part of God's rest. Healing is part of God's grace. Folks, healing is not an effort for God. All right? Because it's already been done. Jesus didn't rest until the cross was over. He didn't sit down in heaven until the work was over. God didn't sit down in heaven until the six days of restoring this earth were over. Then he rested. And God is simply saying here, and so is Jesus, we've entered into a perpetual rest. And that's why healing is for you today. And so again, healing is not work for God. It's simply part of God's grace. It's something that's been accomplished. And Jesus came and again loved to heal people on the Sabbath day. You know what? Think about this for just a moment. Did Jesus come to break the law? Did Jesus ever break the law? No, he said, I didn't come to break it. I came to fulfill it. Jesus fulfilled the law. Listen, if it was against the law of the Old Testament to work on the Sabbath day and Jesus healed on the Sabbath day, then apparently healing is not work. Now, what did Jesus do? We're not going to find any place in the Old Testament in the law that you couldn't heal on the Sabbath day. We're going to find that out. Jesus did not break the law. He broke religious tradition that had been added to the law. In fact, he delighted in breaking religious tradition. You know, I've heard ministers say this. Andrew is one of my favorite that says this. He said, I love to just kick over sacred cows. What he means by that is not scriptural things, but things that religion has added to the things of the Word of God are added to people's life that are like bondage. To me, the Pharisees were the liberals of their day. I'm, we got liberal religion today, we've got religion, a liberal politics today, but what liberalism likes to do is add lots of laws into your life and bind you, all in the name of their setting you free, while at the same time they're taking money from you. Well, amen. And that's what the Pharisees did. The Pharisees just put laws on people and laws on people to bind them, and they kept talking about this was their freedom, and all these laws were supposed to make them free. Jesus came along and he broke the laws that had been added by men to the Word of God, but he did not break the law, because there's nothing back there that says that. You know, I heard a sermon one time, it was one of the best I'd ever heard on what, what legalism really is. In the, in the garden, remember that when Satan said to the woman, has God said... What did God say? She said, well, God said we cannot eat of this tree, nor can we touch it. Did God ever say they couldn't touch it? No, where did she hear that? Adam must have added that. In other words, God sets a law, so we add another law to keep people further away from it. So, in other words, God said, don't eat this tree. Well, Adam says, God said, don't eat the tree. He also said, don't touch it. So, by not touching it, she couldn't eat it. So, he was getting further away from it. What happens when she touches the tree and nothing happens? You begin to doubt whether or not if you eat something, it won't happen. See what I'm saying? Now, how do you know that sexual immorality is wrong in the Bible? What did we add to it? Don't dance. Because it could incite lust. And then, you know, to further keep from that, don't go to movies because it's dark in there and, you know, something could happen in there. But what happens one day when your kids go to a movie, nothing happens. So then they think, well, well I'll dance. Nothing happens there. So the next thing is, I guess I can just commit adultery because, see, if you keep breaking them all the way down, you need to stick with the Word of God. But what religion did was keep adding things to what God had said. And so since God said they weren't supposed to do work on the Sabbath day, they said that healing was work. They added it to it, and they had the people convinced of this. But Jesus had no problem breaking through what he saw was their additions to it, and still he did not break the law. So we have there again that Jesus never broke laws, he broke religious tradition, all right? So uh, here, there's three verses of scripture on this one. This must have been a great story because they told it three times. Matthew chapter 12, verses 1 through 13. Mark chapter 2, verses 23 through 28. And Luke chapter 6, verses 1 through 10 are three different times telling of the story when Jesus picked corn with his disciples on the Sabbath day. 
and then he healed also on that day. Jesus was with his disciples. They were hungry, the Bible said, and so Jesus and the disciples picked corn. And you know what happened? Suddenly the Pharisees were in the cornfield going, aha, we've caught you picking corn. It must have been fun picking corn, and Jesus has probably punched his disciples saying, look over there among those corn, because there's faces in there like this. And they're trying to watch for Jesus to pick corn. And the moment that he picks corn, the disciples pick corn, they go, aha, it's against the law to pick corn on the Sabbath day. Jesus didn't break the law. He broke tradition that had been added to the law. The Bible says they weren't supposed to harvest on the Sabbath day, do work on the Sabbath day, but the Bible is filled with instances that it's okay to go and pick something if you're hungry. In fact, your field is supposed to be open for people to take an ear of corn or take an apple or take something like that if they're truly hungry on the Sabbath day but you're not supposed to harvest on that day because that's work. Jesus didn't break the law. He broke the tradition that was added to it. So again, on that one, so again, in that verse of scripture, those three verses of scripture, the field was given to anyone who was hungry. They could pick fruit, they could pick grain, and they could eat them. In Mark chapter three, verses one through five, Jesus healed a man with a withered hand, and the scriptures are quick to point out it was on the Sabbath day. In John chapter five, verses one through 15, Jesus healed the man at the pool of Bethesda. He was persecuted by the Pharisees for the man, the man was, uh, uh, was criticized by the Pharisees for carrying his bed on the Sabbath day. I think I would have rejoiced that the man was healed instead of griping at him for carrying his bed on the Sabbath day. There's nothing wrong with carrying your bed once you've been healed. I don't care what day it is. They have just added that to the laws of the Old Testament. So again, it was not unscriptural for this man to carry his bed, nor was it unscriptural for Jesus to heal him. In John chapter 7, verses 21 through 23, Jesus condemned them on the Sabbath day for keeping the law of circumcision, but not wanting anybody to be healed on that day. He said, you circumcise your son if it's the eighth day. Why, that's such an important thing that you'll break the Sabbath for that and circumcise your son. But I come and heal a person so they can live and you get mad at me for healing a person and yet you'll circumcise your own sons on the Sabbath day. In John chapter nine, verses 13 through 15, Jesus healed a blind man with spit and clay. Then scriptures are quick to point out it was the Sabbath day. I think it's wonderful how the scripture keeps saying, oh, by the way, it was the Sabbath day. Oh, and this, oh, by the way, it was the Sabbath day to show that Jesus loved to heal on the Sabbath day and proving it was not work for him to heal. Mark chapter two and verse 28, Jesus said, the son of man is Lord of the Sabbath day. You've been listening to Bob Yandian's teaching series called Healing is Our Right. Many instances of divine healing are recorded in the Old and New Testaments. Part of the foundational truths of Christianity is not salvation alone, but also divine healing from sickness and disease. To learn more about your rights to live a life free of sickness, call 918-250-2207 and order this seven lesson series in its full unedited form for a suggested donation of $35. Ask for an uncut CD copy of today's lesson for only $5, shipping and handling included. An MP3 copy of this complete series is available online for only $21 at www.precepts.com. All major credit cards are accepted. You'll receive all of the lessons that aired this week, including Healing Belongs to You, Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath, and Healing is Also a Reward. And if you'd like to sample the series with no obligation, visit www.precepts.com to download the lesson from this series not aired on this broadcast called Healing and Forgiveness. No purchase is necessary. The lesson is free when you visit the website. To order by phone, call 918-250-2207 between 8.30 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. Central Time. After hours, leave a message and someone will call during the next business day. Or... Visit www.precepts.com anytime to order the series, Healing is Our Right. Tomorrow we'll continue this liberating series called Healing is Our Right. Don't miss it. Until then, may God richly bless you and your family.